The intent of this video is to review the effectiveness of standard World War II high explosive bombs would have on humans, buildings, armor, like tanks, and concrete fortifications. Period footage shows a detonation of general purpose bombs dropped from high altitude. The bombs caused damage by fragmentation and shock waves, both ground and air. The shock waves are visible radiating outward from the detonation site. The impact and effectiveness of napalm incendiaries British earthquake type tall boys and grand slams and the Disney swish were covered in the channel's previous videos. The most common type of World War II bomb the U.S. adopted was the general purpose high explosive demolition bomb. We will refer to this type of bomb as GP. This table from a 1945 declassified Office of Statistical Control document titled Army Air Forces Statistical Digest World War II lists the type and number of bombs the U.S. Army Air Forces dropped in World War II during the years from 1943 through 1945. The categories include GP, which accounted for 67% of all bombs, fragmentation 12%, incendiaries 21%, and armor piercing and semi-armor piercing at 0.5%. GP bombs were mostly adopted based on their destructive effects on structures. This table lists the general purpose bomb weight class and number deployed during World War II. The weight class ranged from 40 pounds to 4,500 pounds. Although the 158 4,500 pound bombs listed are the rocket assisted concrete penetrating Disney Swishes, they should be classified as semi armor piercing. They were only deployed by B 17s towards the end of the war in the European theater. The 1,220 4,000 pound class bombs listed were only dropped over Japan. None were dropped over Europe by the U.S. The British did develop their own 4,000 pound block busting bombs as shown in these images. The most common GP bomb dropped during World War II was the 500 pound class GP bomb as shaded in this row. Other common GP bombs included the 100, 250, 1000, and 2000 pound class. This table from a 1945 National Defense Research Committee document titled Weapons Data, Fire, Impact, and Explosion outlines the characteristics of GP bombs. The columns represent the bomb's weight, class, and name full up weight in pounds, explosive fill type, weight of explosive fill, bomb's diameter and length, case thickness in inches, and notes. This image from a 1945 United States Navy bomb disposal document titled Bombs and Fuses Pyrotechnics identifies the cutaway features of an AN-M64 500-pound class GP bomb. The bomb is 56.8 inches in length, 14.2 inches in diameter, and its casing thickness is 0.3 inches. The bomb contains 267 pounds of TNT. Its full up weight equates to 525 pounds. The bomb's detonation train starts with activation of either the nose or tail fuse. The nose fuse is the AN-M103. The boosters are part of the detonation train which will activate the bomb's TNT fill. This chart describes and provides a cutaway of the AN-M103 fuse. The fuse can be set for instantaneous or a 0.1 second time delay between impact and detonation. The base's armorer will select this feature through the fuse's setting pin. The fuse will be armed when the veins have rotated 330 revolutions for instantaneous or 220 revolutions for a 0.1 second time delay detonation. The bomb will have air travel a distance of 760 to 1600 feet from bomber release for instantaneous setting or 510 to 1080 feet for time delay depending on the bomb type. The effectiveness of general purpose bombs is described on this page from a 1944 Army Air Forces Tactical Center document titled Effects of Bombs and Fuses. The most destructive effects of the bombs comes from either explosive blast or bomb fragmentation. Blast effects are greater the closer the bomb detonates to the target. Fragmentation damage, however, is more significant than blast at greater distances. The bomb's effectiveness is proportional to the explosive fill and inversely proportional to the square of the distance to the target. Bomb's effectiveness is dependent on target penetration prior to detonation. Most structures and target installations are easily penetrated by general purpose bombs. This is why most bomb fuses are set with a small time delay. Blast is defined as a peak pressure and impulse. Let's take a look at footage of a bomb detonating. This 4,000 pound bomb is statically suspended 20 feet above the ground and detonated by an electric blasting cap. At a slower speed, you can see the shock wave moving towards the camera. 
The detonation's intense white light lasts 0.003 seconds and white hot steel casing fragments are projected outward at a speed of Mach 9.4. Yes, Mach 9.4. Tying the three bomb detonation event sequences, notice the bright light, casing fragments, and ground shock wave. This chart outlines the effect of a GP bomb blast on humans from a 1945 document titled Terminal Ballistics Data, Volume 3. The x-axis is a type of GP bomb and the distance from detonation in feet. The y-axis is the bomb's peak pressure level in PSI from 1 to 1,000. The curve in the body of the chart is the bomb's peak pressure based on bomb size and distance from detonation. The annotations in the chart are the bomb's peak pressure shockwave effects on humans and structures. The pressure effects of a 500-pound GP bomb's detonation on humans are as follows. Eardrum rupture at a distance of 52 feet from detonation. Blown away at a distance of 35 feet. 50% will experience severe injury at 30 feet. 50% fatal rate at 16 feet. The blast pressure should be reduced by one half for personnel in foxholes, slit trenches, or ditches. This chart outlines the likelihood of 500-pound bomb fragments causing a casualty. The bomb's initial blast fragment velocity equates to 7,390 feet per second. This equates to a speed of Mach 6.6. .6. From a distance of 70 feet away from ground detonation, the bomb is sending 16,190 fragments large enough to cause a casualty. 0.431 fragments will strike every square foot, or one fragment will strike every 2.32 square feet. A standing human exposes around 2 square feet, so it is quite likely a strike will occur. This contour map shows the distribution zones of at least 1 hit per square foot, 1 hit per 4 square feet, and 1 hit per 10 square feet, given the ground burst orientation shown. The shielding material type and thickness required to protect personnel is shown on this page from a 1945 document titled Facts for Air Raid Wardens and Every Civilian. This image shows a level of shielding needed to stop 500-pound bomb splinter fragments at a distance of 50 feet. This includes 1.5 inches of mild steel, 12 inches of reinforced concrete, or 30 inches of sand and earth. The effect of a GP bomb ground detonation on a residential block is shown on this image. The column is the weight class of the GP bomb from 100 to 4,000 pounds. The picture represents the damage level of the block. The solid line under the block is a distance of total demolition. The dashed line is a distance from detonation to visible damage. For example, total block demolition occurs at a distance of 20 feet away and visible damage occurs at 45 feet away from a ground detonation point of a 500 pound GP bomb. Notice that doubling the bomb size does not double the demolition distance. A 1,000 pound bomb total demolition damage distance is 33 feet, which is 1.65 times Times the distance of a 500 pound bomb. A GP bomb striking soil will cause an earthen crater. This chart outlines the path of a 500 pound bomb in various soils in various few settings. The types of soils are soft, medium, and hard pan. The y axis is the depth the bomb travels to detonation from 0 to 25 feet. The paths are based on the bomb release parameters. For example, a bomb release from a plane traveling at a speed of 250 miles an hour at an altitude of 20,000 feet will follow this ground trajectory path in soft soil. For an M103 fuse setting of 0.1 seconds, the bomb will detonate 22.5 feet below the surface. This table lists the size of crater expected. For example, a 500-pound GP bomb dropped from a 20,000-foot altitude from a speed of 250 miles an hour fused for a standard 0.1 second delay striking soft soil will penetrate 25 feet at detonation. The blast will form a crater 22 feet in diameter and 33 feet deep and displace 81 cubic feet of earth. For reference, a 20 kiloton equivalent yield atomic bomb underground detonation will produce a crater 1,020 feet in diameter and 450 feet in depth, as shown on this table from a 1963 U.S. Army Material Command document titled Elements of Armament Engineering Ballistics. 
the armor penetration of GP bombs is listed on this page from the reference shown earlier. They are not recommended to be deployed against armor due to the large bombing dispersion and low strike velocities. A delay fused GP bombs casing will deform and likely rupture causing a low order detonation. A 500 pound GP bomb can punch through 3 inches of armor if the nose fuse is set for instantaneous detonation. A 100 pound GP bomb can punch through armor of 1.8 inches thick. If a non-delay tail fuse is used, then this increases the armor punch through levels by 20%. This page from a 1944 Army Air Forces Board document titled Joint Army-Navy Committee on Bomb and Fuse Selection provides the recommended type and size of bombs for German tanks as targets. The preferable bomb to use against armored tank columns is the 100-pound general purpose bomb with the non-delay tail fuse. Since a Tiger tank's upper armored Planform panels are 1.02 inches thick. A 100-pound bomb would easily be capable of punching through these panels. This page provides guidance with regard to GP bombs targeting heavy concrete structures from a 1945 Army Air Force Board European Theater of Operations document titled The Relative Effectiveness of Various Bombs and Fuses. Targeting thick concrete reinforced structures with general purpose bombs is not recommended. As like with armor, the bomb's casing is not strong enough to withstand the impact from high altitude release. Case rupture will occur and an associated low order detonation. This image shows the results of a 500 pound GP bombs case rupture low order detonation on a thick concrete slab. This chart recommends the bomb type and size targeting a 5 foot thick German pillbox. There are no suitable US bombs available to target thick concrete fortifications. All bombs tested failed. Best to attack these structures with a near miss 2,000 pound GP bomb with delay fusing. Testing shows a 2,000 pound bomb will destroy a 7 foot thick concrete wall if detonated adjacent to that wall. This table lists the maximum thickness of concrete perforation based on strength of concrete and weight class of GP bomb. A 500 pound GP bomb can perforate a concrete slab of 1 to 1.5 inches thick if dropped from an altitude above 5,000 feet, depending on the strength of the concrete. If you've enjoyed this deep dive GP bomb target effectiveness video, please consider commenting, liking, and or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.